like to start with a, a very short introduction of the Jolt Riders Peer Support Group. Um, I am Kinsella Valise, the, the chair of the PSG, as we call ourselves, uh, coordinators and um, dear, dear friends. Um, Jeff Carr, if you would like to wave, Jeff. <laughs> no, okay, okay. Cecilia Kiguchi, um, Josh Kidd, and Bethany Lacey. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to contact any of us and we can uh, help you further. Okay. Um, so what are we doing today? So there is a word from our sponsor, uh, one of our sponsors uh, today. Uh, there's going to be a very, very micro uh, short introduction to PSG. So you know a little bit about us. Then I will introduce Dr. Melody Cook uh, so that she can start her workshop. We will have questions uh, from the monitor chat we will have live Q&A. Please use the raise hand feature at that time. And finally, to wrap up, um, uh, after hopefully a very interesting conversation, uh, I will mention the upcoming events that PSG is organizing and would like to ask for your help uh, with some feedback for Melody uh, and PSG. Okay. So um, to introduce you to our supporters and sponsors, uh, the Students Peer Interaction Network Committee, the Shizuoka JALT chapter, JALT Call, and the JALT Ibaraki chapter. Um, Martin Pauli would like to say a few words. Hello, where I'm from the Ibaraki chapter and Cecilia is one of the members of the group. And uh, it's good to see uh, some new friends and some old friends. By old, I don't mean uh, old in age. I mean like from a long time ago. And uh, <clears throat> let me formally welcome everybody in some different languages of the world. So welcome, bienvenue, welcome, yokoso, irashemase, anyohaseo, Niemann how Ben Vindo, Herzlichen Willkommen, Hochkeldenes, and Sawadee Krop. So uh, thank you all for coming, and uh, I'm looking forward to a nice uh, a nice afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin, uh, for that lovely welcome in so many languages and in sign language as well. Thank you so much. Um, uh -huh. If uh, you would bear with me for a little bit, I would like to just quickly, very quickly tell you about uh, PSG. So who, who are PSG, the Peer Support Group within JELT? Um, we are a committee of JALT volunteers. Um, we are people who enjoy and want to read academic manuscripts. Um, we are readers who aim to provide constructive feedback. We are the friendly eyes that will look at your paper that you are wanting to publish. Um, and we will give you ideas. We will give you a different perspective on your work. And we will do that for free because we enjoy doing that. Um, the types of submission that we are willing to look at um, or are interested in are abstracts. So if you are submitting an abstract for a conference um, or you're writing an abstract for your, for your uh, publication, um, we are willing to have a look at that and help you tighten it up. Rough drafts, so completed drafts, but rough drafts that uh, where you would perhaps like to tell us what sections you want to work on most and we can give you some ideas there. Um, polished manuscripts that are ready to go, but you would still like someone to have a look. Uh, your friend, of course, is always very, very good resource, a helpful a colleague is always a good resource, but having people who are unrelated to you and might tell you more directly things that could, could or need to be changed, uh, we, are, we are very happy to take on that role and do so. Okay. 
So um, if you would like for more information about submitting manuscripts with us or possibly uh, volunteering to be a reader or uh, someone to assist others with their manuscripts, please uh, scan this QR code or please go to jalt-publications.org slash PSG. Thank you very much. Okay, so then let's dive right in. Uh, and I would like to introduce Dr. Melody Cook. Um, she is a professor at the University of Niigata Prefecture. And she is not only an educator, but also an avid researcher, uh, a book series editor. Um, some examples from her work are uh, most recently, the foreign female English teachers in Japan, uh, Japanese higher education narratives from our quarter, intercultural families and schooling in Japan, experiences and issues and challenges. Um, please do check out uh, some of uh, these books. They are very interesting. Um, and uh, I think it would be very helpful to have an insight into these experiences. All right. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Melody Cook. I would like you to take it away. Uh, let me stop sharing and allow you to share your slides. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to thank everybody for giving up a Saturday uh, afternoon to, or part of a Saturday afternoon to come and hear me talk. And I hope I have something useful for you. Um, I have two parts to the presentation. Uh, the first part is things that you should do. The second part is things you should try not to do. Um, and um, I'm excited to talk about um, some new initiatives that um, are coming down the pike um, starting from next November. Okay, so let me uh, share my slides. Okay, so this is the first part of today's talk, which is how to get published in JALT publications. Actually, I'm going to talk primarily about JALT publications, but any publications, really, a lot of the rules um, apply. So, um, and, and I want to thank the peer support group for inviting me. I'm actually on the list of uh, readers, but I have yet to accept a, ma a manuscript because I can't <laughs> do what's going on. One of these days I will do it. One of these days I will do it. Okay, so uh, let me get started. Hello, go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, the journals that I'm talking about primarily today are the post-conference publication and a language teacher and JALT journal. So these are the three main publications of JALT. Um, of course, there are lots of other publications in JALT. Um, many chapters have their own publication. Um, SIGs must uh, publish something that's part of their mandate, all the special interest groups. So I'm going to talk about each one of these, uh, what they are uh, looking for. So the closed conference publication, this is an online only publication, and it's based on papers uh, and presentations uh, made at the JALT National Conference. So you probably have heard of it as a proceedings, and the word proceedings has sometimes a negative connotation, like it's going to be a lower quality, everyone's going to be accepted. This is not true. but we changed the name some years ago to post-conference um, publications. So these are the guidelines for these. Uh, so if you present at the conference and you do a paper or a workshop or a poster presentation, then you have a 4,000 word maximum. And Basically, what is expected is a lively combination of classroom practice, theory, and research. And if you underwrite, as well as overwrite, uh, your submission will not be considered. Um, there was a lot more leveraging in the past, and I think 
the uh, editing team over years has been deciding that, you know, they want the best work from people and they want people to follow the instructions. And this is really an important part of becoming an academic and entering, entering the world of publishing. You have to be able to follow instructions because every journal has uh, its own way of doing things and they expect you to follow those ways, those guidelines. Um, the other kinds of um, things that you will see at the co a conference are colloquia, forums, and plenary sessions. These can also be written up. Um, they have a longer word limit, which is 5,000 words, which is the maximum, and must be written uh, by one or more participating uh, presenters. So the presenters, however, more is the, everyone should be involved in the writing of it. Perhaps one of the participating presenters writes the skeleton or the outline, but all the presenters who presented should be involved in the writing process to have their names listed. So if they presented, but they didn't contribute to the publication, there's a problem, okay? So keep that in mind. So that this is about the um, post-conference publication. This is the um, approximate timeline. And I say approximate timeline, and actually this goes for all journals. Um, things happen. Life happens, reviewers suddenly uh, disappear. Uh, writers have a family crisis. So this is an approximate timeline. Things happen and things can be worked around. So first of all, between January and February, uh, the reading committee coordinator gets the paper and assigns them to the reviewers. And then February and March, the authors are contacted about the status of their papers, which is we accept this to go on to the next stage or we don't. And the editor in chief, editor in chief assigns those ones that are going to the next stage to the associate editors. Uh, that's between February and March. Between March and June, the associate editor works with the author to revise the paper and sends the paper to the editor in chief. And then the paper is assigned to a copy editor. So that's between March and June. Uh, the copy editor corrects the paper with the assistance of the author to make sure that none of the content is changed without permission and sends the corrected paper to the head copy editor. This happens around April and July. And then the head copy editor sends out the completed paper to the editor in chief who approves the paper for layout. Sorry, there's a little, I need a little more, more copy editing on my own slides. I'll fix that. Uh, who approves the paper for layout. That happens in May to July. And then at the end, between June and August, the laid out paper is returned to the head copy editor who sends it to the author for a final check. So as you can see, it takes about eight months or so, or it might be less, depending on the number of papers and how quickly people are getting their papers um, back in. Could we get a copy of this timeline? Uh, yes, I will, uh, this is being recorded and I will give my uh, slides to, um, PSG, if you want to have them. Okay, next. Um, this is, I, I talked to the editors to get this kind of information. Uh, the acceptance rate now is about 60%. It used to be 80%. Um, I haven't been for a few years, but I used to be um, a content editor. And to be honest, when it was 80%, some of the things that came in needed a lot of leveraging. Um, I had cases where I, I actually wrote an outline for an author and I said, I suggest you follow this outline and rewrite your paper. And a lot of new uh, academics 
may be unclear on you know, the real meaning of qualitative research and the real meaning of quantitative research. Uh, they may misunderstand what those things mean. Um, and, and so the acceptance rate has been lowered in recent years. Um, so to make sure that the papers we get are, you know, have a really high quality and um, have the potential to be successful. Uh, the editor's advice, this is all editor's advice and everybody, all the editors said this, uh, I should update this, but um, read the publication guidelines very carefully and take a look at past selected papers for samples. I've had a, um, my colleague Howard Brown and I wrote a paper that was accepted as a selected paper. Selected papers are um, five papers are, are chosen out of all the papers that are sent to the um, post-conference publication and are set aside. They're, they're usually the first five published. It's kind of um, an honor to have a selected paper. So if you look at the selected papers, it really gives you a good idea of what kind of papers um, are being asked for. Sorry, I'm checking the, ch okay, I'm going to stop checking the chat and just keep going and let other people deal with that for now. Okay, um, all major correspondence is sent through the submission website, and I'll give you the access to that in a minute, but they recommend that you check your junk mail folder or your spam folder just in case, because you may have received an answer, although you may not know it. <laughs> um, and then um, if you have any questions and you're assigned to a content editor, immediately ask your content editor uh, for help. Um, and then incomplete, incorrectly formatted and excessively long submissions will not be processed. So they will just take a look and go, no. So really, read the remit that is the guidelines i say this across the board for all journals or any any venue you are submitting to read the remit what do they expect how do they expect you to format it there's always a formatting guideline tells you what fonts to use what headings to use whether to use apa and so on uh, always follow that Oh, yes. And this is the uh, on the website. You can find this if you go to JALT Publications on the main website, you will see the guidelines. It's still called Proceedings there, but um, but that's what you need. OK, uh, the second one I'm going to talk about is the language teacher. And this is probably the mo one of the most widely read. Actually, I was surprised I did. Uh, maybe some of you know, uh, in 2021, I did a survey when I was director of membership. I did a big survey on people's engagement with JALT, and I looked at engagement with publications. And I was uh, quite pleased to see uh, we got a very high rate of response. So um, uh, I was pleased to see that it was about 50-50 for the language teacher and JALT journal, which is our, our flagship uh, research publication. Um, the language teacher is a very friendly and fun publication, and I encourage you to submit to it. Uh, it's a ma materials concerned with all aspects of language education, particularly with relevance to Japan. Now I say that, because it is a Japanese-based publication. But if you are writing about a trend, let's say, I mean, CLIL, it's been around for a few years, okay? So uh, SDGs, teaching SDGs, this is a big trend. So maybe you are comparing what's, what's being taught in Japan and what's being taught in Korea or something like that. So if you can relate it to something that's being done in Japan, that will be acceptable, okay? Um, about the journal sections, refereed and non-refereed for the language teacher. So feature articles uh, are refereed. 
non-refereed uh, readers forum. Actually, readers forum is refereed. I'm sorry. Interviews are not. So they're not peer reviewed. You can't count them as peer reviewed. Readers forum you can and feature articles. So the word limits are more strict, uh, 3,000 to 4,000 words, and that's excluding appendices. So my uh, advice is that if you have a lot of tables and things, don't embed them in the text, put them in the appendices, because use your, use your words, <laughs> use your space for your words. Um, so characteristics, well-written, well-documented, scholarly, relevant, original, classroom-based research. Um, now, it doesn't only have to be classroom-based research. It should be scholarly, relevant. These are all ki the kinds of things that they're looking for. So you should have um, up-to-date references. Your references shouldn't be too old. Um, it should be well-written. You should be following APA guidelines. Um, your language should be in a scholarly register. Um, your work should be relevant, uh, original, and uh, not necessarily classroom-based. That's good. It's a good place to do, to publish your classroom-based research. Uh, I did research. I had a paper, one of my first papers published in Language Teacher was about, that's a long time ago, 2012. I, oh my God, it's 13. 11 years ago. Oh my God. Um, it was about uh, my research on entrance exams. And I did a big, big study. I collected a lot of data about foreign teachers' participation in creating entrance exams. And I learned a lot of really interesting things. And I published uh, one of the papers in uh, Language Teacher. Uh, Reader's Forum. This is a shorter one between 2,000 and 2,500 words. Uh, thoughtful essays on topics related to language teaching and learning in Japan. So take a look at the language teacher, take a look at feature articles, take a look at the readers forum and um, see, you know, what kinds of things are people writing. So this can be, you know, a trend in language teaching and it's whether it's working or not working, anything. You take something and put your own angle on it. Finally, um, interviews, excuse me. Hence the, uh, okay. Uh, so interviews uh, between 1500 and 2000 words. Maybe you want to interview uh, somebody who comes to the JALT conference and gives a talk. Some, uh, I call them famous uh, people, uh, uh, famous researchers in the field, but you should consult the editor first to make sure no one has interviewed that person before. So that's some advice from a JALT journal, a language teacher. So uh, this is the access, it's online intake, and this is where you send it. And you can find all this on the, the website, okay? So submission guidelines, everything you need is on the website when in publications. Uh, the re review process and timelines. Um, so you will receive an acknowledgement within a month. That means within a month, you will find out, yes, it's accepted or no, it's not. Um, then awaiting review, six months. That depends on the section and current waiting list. Uh, the review time. So the reviewer is given um, a month to review it, the assigned reviewer. And then preparation for publication, uh, three months or longer, um, if in contact with the editor. And that means that there's some back and forth and there's some issues that need to be um, uh, addressed. Now, some people say, you know, it might take you about a year to have a paper accepted. This is normal. This is normal. It's not a long time. So don't be um, surprised. Deborah Groh is here. Shout out to Deborah San Shido. Her son is going into the Olympics for judo, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Pointed him out on TV the other night. Sorry, I, I just distracted because I have ADHD. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, um, the acceptance rate is lower. It's around 20 to 25%. 
Now, there's no reason that it should be so low. The reason is that people are sending things that are not meeting the remit. Now, we get a lot of overseas submissions. I'll talk about that in a minute when I talk about what not to do. Um, we will get submissions that are off the remit. They're not related to Japan. They don't follow APA style. Someone has clearly not looked at the guidelines. There's no reason that your paper shouldn't get accepted if you follow the guidelines and do your best work. Okay, editor's advice. Uh, know the publication process and the editor's role. Read the publication. Any publication you wanna send to, read the publication so you can see what kind of articles. And I know I'm probably, you know, I'm trying to, I'm making these motions, like I really wanna hit it home. Um, know what the publication looks like so that you can have a good chance of getting accepted and follow the guidelines. This is the main problem. People don't follow the guidelines. They are there. So there's no reason not to follow them and pay attention to the editor's advice. Now you can disagree with the editor. You have that prerogative. You might think someone misread what you wrote. As long as you provide a good rationale, you can disagree. It's not set in stone. But if, if you are a newbie, if you are new to academic writing, the editor's advice, the editors want you to succeed. They wanna help you, don't blow them off, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Take, take, uh, pay attention to their advice. Okay, so Jolt Journal, uh, these are the topics. It has a wider focus because it's uh, the most international of our journal, our flagship journal. Um, as I said, curriculum design, classroom-centered research, cross-cultural studies, testing, teacher training. Now, actually, a lot of these things um, can, you can have those things in um, language teacher, what is the difference, depth and breadth. Okay, so JALT Journal is expecting a very high quality of writing. So PhD level, I would say, or somebody who has had a lot of experience writing a lot of articles for journals. So JALT Journal is the place for highly experienced writers to go. Um, now they have special focused issues. If they get enough papers on a specific issue or they will advertise a specific issue, this is something new and I think it's brilliant. We didn't have that when I was um, editor. I didn't think of it. So some other brilliant person thought of it. Uh, the journal sections, uh, refereed and non-refereed. Okay, refereed, I mean uh, peer reviewed. So full length articles, quite long, okay? 8,000 words maximum, but that includes everything. References, notes, tables, and figures, okay? Uh, characteristics, demonstration of breadth and depth, theory to research focus and originality. Uh, research forum, this is a shorter research report. So it may be in more depth and have more references than something that you might wanna put in the language teacher. It might be, um, let's say you have a big, you, you do a, a study, you collect a ton of data, but you have something really interesting, but you don't have a whole lot of it. But it's really well-researched and well-referenced. This is the place to put it in research form. Uh, we have something called perspectives. Uh, 5,000 words maximum, um, essays framed in theory and supported by primary or secondary data. So again, perspectives is like a new angle on maybe an old practice. Uh, point to point, finally, um, and I, I dealt with a point to point. It's, it, it doesn't happen often, but it's really interesting when it does. Uh, 675 words maximum. And this is comments on previously published JALT journal articles. Um, this, we, I had one, uh, someone had published a quantitative study and a quantitative researcher from Greece read it. 
and had some questions about it and wrote, you know, I have some questions about the methodology, blah, 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 blah. And actually we did send it to some quantitative qual, uh, quali quantitative researchers who are on the editorial board, help us out and let's, you know, find an answer to this. So it's kind of a dialogue between the reader and the writer. And it's a, it's a really interesting thing, but it's a little bit of a rare bird. Um, books and media review, see new guidelines. I'm gonna show you the new guidelines in a minute. Uh, academic or professional development titles for teachers, you can find in the TLT. The list is in TLT, recently received. Now, books and media reviews, we're looking for books about practice. We're not necessarily looking at textbooks. Textbooks, unless you're taking a theoretical interest in a group of textbooks, uh, a new textbook we're looking at maybe in the language teacher. But if you're reading a book on theory, then that's a good place. Okay, so academic or professional development titles for teachers. Uh, the review, the number of reviews we're hoping for uh, is three per issue. Now, there have been more uh, in past issues. You'll notice there's usually about six, and I'm going to tell you why we've changed that in a moment. And uh, it's about one year lead time. And we have also increased the number of words, 2,000 words for a book review starting in May. So November, that's done. That's already panel beaten, whatever the heck that means. And it's it's almost ready to go to be published for November. But uh, my tenure begins after Greg Ruwalt finishes. And so I will be uh, doing this um, fa fantastic new things. So who are we targeting for this? We're tar targeting experienced researchers and teachers and graduate students, okay? So this is a, a good chance to take a deep dive into some books. I actually hate that expression, but it really is the best one. Um, and I'm, let me, I'm going to, I'll, I'll call it up when I'm done. I'm just about done here. Um, Continuous intake, actually, uh, for the, there, there is a link, I'm sorry, I, I should have the link for uh, Jolt Journal, but it is in the, on the website, um, but they, oh yes, here it is. So continue, continuous intake, so you can submit anytime. The publications are twice a year, May and November. So this is for the editor. Uh, this is for Japanese submissions, of course, we welcome Japanese submissions and the reviews will go here and that's direct mail. You just send them to me. So once the book, you choose a book, you look at the TLT books, you send me an email, you send me an email to this and I go, oh, okay, yes. And I will have the book sent to you and then, and then you will do the review. Okay, so uh, review procedures and timelines. Uh, the initial screening is one month, sometimes less, depends on how busy the editor is. Uh, there is a blind peer review by two or more reviewers. Now, this takes between two and four months, and this is um, best case scenario. Uh, things happen. Uh, revision by the author, if the review is positively received, as one to two months and then one month for a second review. Now, so this looks like, you know, it could take less than a year, but that this is like super best case scenario where everybody does everything on time. And I can guarantee that will not happen because stuff happens, life happens, people get busy. The advice from the editors, including myself and the present editors uh, know the remit, Use appropriate register formatting and referencing, which is APA 7. Uh, you need to include a Japanese abstract if you submit in English or an English abstract if you submit in Japanese. We do not supply the abstract. 
there is Deeple, but you can try that, but get a Japanese researcher to read it for you. Okay, so this is not a service that we provide. Uh, please understand the difference between a master's degree and a PhD paper and a publication. There are places where you can publish your PhD. I think um, Asian EFL Journal will do it. They have special issues. They have only online, so they can do it. But if you want to publish research that you gleaned from your MA or your PhD, you have to rewrite it. You have to shorten it considerably, okay, to 8,000 words. Um, so that's very important. Um, properly blind your paper. So there shouldn't be any way that someone can know who the paper comes from. So you write it in MS Word and take your name off. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to do that now with recent versions of Word, but uh, please do this. You can probably find out how to do this from the internet. The acceptance rate is quite low, 10% of papers. The reason for this is that we tend to get a lot of papers that are not, that do not meet the remit. I would get two papers a month from the same guy overseas. And it, it was just, well, it looked like a cut and paste mess. And then it was not related to Japan at all. And it was, yeah. So if you are serious, if you seriously want to get your paper published, then you must follow the guidelines. I can't say that enough. All right, so uh, what are we looking for? The editors, we're looking for relevance, we're looking for currency. So don't take out your MA that you or your PhD, even for me. I cannot take out my PhD that I, that I published in 2010 and take anything out of that without updating because my references are way out of date. So 10 years is like, you know, kind of the limit. If you're sending a paper with a lot of uh, references from the 80s and 90s, unless you are doing an historical review, it's out of date. So your references should be within the last 10 years. Unless it's a really niche field and there are only a few people writing on it. Um, breadth and depth. So read JJ and you'll know what I mean. Okay, so these are highly researched. These are pages and pages of reference. And so it's it's wide and it's deep. There's a lot of information. And of course, the style, APA style, and proper uh, language use. Um, reviewer, see handout. Okay, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to stop share. Um, please bear with me as I bring up these documents. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, I was going to uh, put it in the chat. That's what I was going to do. Okay. Uh, oops, I had that on that file. Sorry, my computer is uh, it's slow. There it is. Okay. So I've sent that to everybody. I, I guess while I'm here, I'll send the other thing.
Can I go longer than an hour? Because it looks like I'm going to. Um, yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I think that we, we are limited to one hour, but if you okay. are going to go over for like five okay. minutes or okay. 10 minutes. Let me okay. just go through this then. Okay, so um, back to Zoom and share screen. So I'm going to go through reviewer form one. Okay, so these are the recommendations. This, when the reviewer gets the gets a manuscript from you, they get this uh, recommendations. Publishes is that never happens. Publish with suggested rewriting that often happens, and maybe a new reviewer. Uh, requires overall writing um, it, with another reviewer, blah, 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 and reject for reasons given below. And then confidential remarks that go to the editor and critique and suggested suggestions for improvement, and that is forwarded to the authors. Okay, so this is what the form looks like. So here, the confidential remarks, this is only goes to the editor, doesn't go to the author. This stuff here, critique and suggestions for improvement, this go to goes to the authors. And some authors might even, you know, put their comments directly on the papers. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that. And now I'm going to share the guidelines for a critical review. Mm. And Madeline, quickly, yes? Me. You sent the previous form uh, directly to me, and then I posted it to everyone. Your oh, did you? Oh. Maybe. Oh, 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 sorry. No, no worries. Okay, thank you. Did you get the guidelines one too? I did. Uh, okay. I haven't gotten the guidelines yet. Oh, okay. But I'm if, gonna show it. Like I'll it, show. It, I'll show it, and then I'll send it again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, oops, wrong thing. PowerPoint. Nope. Nope. Sorry, I'm having a a bit of a breakdown here, a mental breakdown. Share screen. Okay. Okay. So. Usually a critical review, a book review is just about the book with maybe a little bit of opinion by the author or by, by the uh, reviewer of the book. Now we're changing that. So generally only we want a summary about the book in about 650 to 700 words. We want a 2000 word review. And many of these, not necessarily all of them, many of these questions answered. Oh, I don't know why it's coming up with this. I hate that. Okay, so anyway, how is the writing style? Is it academic? Um, is it accurate and contemporary? So this is a, a dialogue between the reviewer and the book and the author of the book. And two people can write one. Two people can read a book and then they can have a dialogue with each other about what they thought about the book and write that up. So all this is going to be spelled out in detail in the November issue of Dalt Journal. So please read it. Okay. And this will be there as well. Okay. I'm going to go and open my other PowerPoint of what not to do. That's very short. So these are this is advice about things not to do. I've divided it in, into categories. The first category is infractions. Okay, so we don't like when you do these things. The paper hasn't been proofread carefully. Salami slicing. I learned this from my colleague, John Adamson. That means you take your data set and you write a whole bunch of papers about it, but they're all real thin. Okay, so don't do that. Uh, the paper is over the word limit. Ugh. This happened to me when I was an editor for Jolt Journal. People would send uh, an abstract and say, will you publish the paper? No, don't send the abstract, send the whole paper. Okay, so never do that. That is wasting the editor's time. Uh, these are what I call violations. Paper shows evidence of plagiarism, other or self. If there, if if one third, and I had this happen, one third of this 
the submission or one third of the re references came from the same author in the reference list. This is too much self citation, so don't do that. Uh, paper has obviously been scattergunned to various journals and is completely off the remit. This is what I mean. There are people in other countries who need to publish to graduate. So they will send their paper out everywhere, hoping that someone will pick it up. A paper is filled with outdated sources. Okay, again, I mentioned currency. Please make sure that your sources are, unless you're doing a historical review, your sources should be within 10 years. Paper is far over the word limit, again. Like not just a little bit, but you know, a couple thousand words. Uh, prospective authors write to the editor and ask, "What kind of articles do you publish?" Ah! <laughs> Don't ever do that. <laughs> read the read the pub, read the publication, and then finally, this is crime. <laughs> Don't be tempted by predatory publishers. Okay, so this is a little blurb about predatory publishers. These are basically people who will publish anything for money. And they don't give very good um, review. Okay, so a predatory publisher, an op opportunistic publishing venue that exploits the academic need to publish, but offers little reward for those using their services. So it is a scam. You will get an email from unsolicited saying, uh, please publish your paper with us. And do you have anything you haven't published? And also, would you like to be a reviewer on our board? Uh, we pro promise to publish your paper next month. Uh, we will give you a review within two weeks. This is this is um, nonsense. Okay. So they claim quick peer review. This is it's it's terrible. So what's the harm uh, when you're looking for a job? If someone sees that you've published with predatory publishers, you may not get the job. And they look, I have been on uh, promotion committees and hiring committees, and everything is scrutinized really thoroughly. So just don't. And also subpar par peer review or no peer review, okay? Also your work could disappear because the journal will disappear. They come and go, okay? And it's embarrassing. So this is just a little, um information about that okay now there was one thing that i skipped in my um one moment let me just um share screen and i'm going to go back to this one my guidelines oh no that's not what i wanted sorry <laughs> Watch the scene you're navigating. And I am putting in a plug for the this group. Okay, and I'm, I'm this is always in my slides because you have a team of writers and reviewers. You will get feedback and they will help you through the rewriting process. It's associated with JALT, but you can get help, help getting published in any publication. And here's the website, as you know. All right, so I did it. I did it with nine minutes to spare. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Melody, for a very interesting presentation. Very, very, very useful very insightful. Can I ask everybody for a round of applause for Dr. Melody Cook, please? Please unmute yourself and please offer a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very, very much. Okay. Um, I guess if it's okay with you, uh, Melody, then it's time for question time. Yeah. Yes. There are a few in the, I think there's one uh, at the top of the chat box list um, from Chilana. Um, where did you get the background that you use? It's so cute. Sorry, that was just for you, Kinsella. 
Oops. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a that's em- background. I'm sure other people want to know. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. It is quite cute. Sorry. Um, so let us uh, move on quickly and pretend that never happened. Um, let's see. Um, in the chat box, um, there aren't any specific questions that haven't been answered. Uh, thank you, right. Jeff, for fielding those. Um, I would like to invite uh, people to use the raise hand function if you have a question so that we may um, give you a chance to speak. Okay, uh, Martin, Martin has a question. Martin, please. Uh, Me- Melody, can I ask you a, a question? Sure. Yeah. Um, what if I said no? Oh, oh <laughs> then I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll run outside, okay? Yeah. Um, won't Going back me. to the uh, 2021 uh, 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 survey that you and Fred yes. and a couple other mates did, um, yeah. I recall, okay, this is about like um, blind review or anonymous review. And so I remember there was somebody complained and they said that um, uh, you're discriminating against people with uh, PhDs. And do you remember that? That was I a kind of crazy. That. That's 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 nonsense. Yeah. yeah. No, we are not. That's that is a misperception. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's one person's opinion, and it's a misperception. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my colleagues is having uh he he doesn't have a PhD, and he's having a paper published in in November in JALT Journal. He is an experienced writer and he's really good with uh, quantitative research and he knows his stuff. And I was told by the editors, you know, like when his, his like they, they said, oh, do you know this guy? When I joined the team, do you know this guy? I said, yeah, he's one of my colleagues. And they're like, this paper is excellent. It's like, there were just a few things to fix. It was pretty much print ready. So, and he doesn't have a PhD, so. So, um, but if it if it's a blind anonymous, how how do you know who the person is? Exactly, exactly. So we can't, we oh. don't. Yeah. So that person's complaint was just a kind of nonsense. Uh... I think that was just probably you know upset that what they sent didn't get published. Okay. Okay. And I mean. Yeah, I can tell you sometime. I'll tell you some over drinks, some funny stories. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we we got some stuff. Well, I'll tell you one story. Somebody sent a whole bunch of it was many pages of, you know, uh, just a few paragraphs or sentences with no connecting theme, and then an eight by four headshot of the guy at the end, and he said, you know, do with this what you will. And I did the round file. <laughs> it's like, what? This, mm-hmm. this was, I, I was like, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Really, the audacity. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, I think people send stuff. I I had one case where someone sent a paper and I, I work quickly and I did the first review. Well, this is when I was the editor and Anne uh, McClellan was my um uh, uh, associate editor and someone sent me something and I sent back r- right away and I said this is sorry we can't accept this and these are the reasons and they wrote back to me and they said you you did that you did that too fast you couldn't have read it thoroughly and I said okay I take your comment seriously I've sent it to my associate editor and here are the other problems that she found and that was the end of that yeah there's a paper in there i think for female editors <laughs> thank you thank you kindly you're welcome thank you martin um Melly, there's actually one more question in the chat sure. if that's okay from yeah. daniel um uh, daniel yeah. asks what advice would you give for someone trying to get their foot in the uh-huh. door or looking mm-hmm. to get practice um, in the language teacher, the language teacher is not only research. The language teacher is, uh, they have many different kinds of um, columns. So you can write 
I would say do an interview. You know, uh, uh, when the when the conference comes up, interview someone. Um, looking to get practice, uh, I would say you could join as a as a, a proofreader. Uh, any of our publications, take on some tasks there, and then you'll be reading a lot. And this is, being the editor of Jolt Journal improved my writing amazingly. It just, it improved my ability to read research and improved my ability to write, write up research. Um, but yes, get if you want to get in the door, um, if you're working at university, if your university has a publication, publish in there. Uh, just look at look at the journals and see what kinds of things there is. If you belong to a special interest group, they have to publish something. They take a look there, see if you can write something for them. Yeah, there's lots of there's lots of things. I'd say flip through the language teacher, look at the different things, and and say to yourself, I could do that. Oh, I mm -hmm. could do that, and then do it. <laughs> yeah, great advice. Thank you very, very much. Um, there is another question, um, Melody. If it's okay, it's oh. actually aimed at PSG. If I can, um, oh, it's it's already been answered, but I'll just I'll just add to that. Um, is there some advice uh, from PSG of how non-native speakers can find colleagues with time? for proofreading and English submission? Um, well, the easy answer is send it to PSG and we'll help you uh, with that. Um, and of course, um, I think my second bit of advice is to to find a colleague with which you, you have a good rapport and just, you know, gear up the guts to actually ask them. And um, everybody who publishes basically needs a second pair of eyes. So I'm sure they're, they've, they've had to ask someone as well, uh, whether they are a native speaker or not. Yeah. Um, uh, and being a non-native speaker, I, I I sincerely mean that just just ask um, yep. a colleague and see if they have, otherwise they might refer you to another colleague who might have yep. a little bit more time. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I had actually, and even if you are a so-called native speaker, get yourself a buddy. Um, I couldn't have gotten where I got without Diane Nagatomo. She and I were in the same cohort at Macquarie University. That's where we met, actually, although we we're both based in Japan. We met in the Macquarie program. And even before we met in person, we were sending our papers to each other, our coursework papers to each other to read and give feedback on. And then we did that through our thesis and other papers since. So, yeah, have a have a, a buddy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that addition. Um, are there um, any other final questions before we wrap up today? Oh, two messages. Uh, ah, yes, there is referencing software. I haven't used it in years. In years, somebody might know. Ah, how do we find out if a journal is predatory or not? Okay, can I show up? Can I show a page? Mm -hmm. Okay. And there was an article that uh, Brown, Howard Brown and I wrote some years ago on how to spot a predatory journal. So if you look in the back issues, if you search the back issues of Language Teacher, you'll find that article. Um, let me show you this. Um, this is Beale's list. And this is uh, the original list and an updated list. And look at, look, look at that. So this is this, the publishers. And then there's a list of all the journals. It's huge. So Beale's list is, is a good start. But if you get, if you get a, a solicitation, that is a sign. 
And if they, they, you know, flatter you, they use a lot of flattery. Um, so this is standalone journals. And this is even more pages than I can show you here. Look at this. There are so many. So this was interesting. What my colleague Howard did was when we were researching for this article, because we were both just starting to get these kinds of emails. And there's also predatory um, conferences. So watch out for those too. There's like holiday conference. Um, but the predatory publishers, they'll write to you. They'll say, oh, we saw your recent work in blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, they'll, they'll just do some preliminary research on you. They might, with spelling mistakes, um, and spell your name wrong or call you professor when you haven't got your PhD yet. Um, and then they'll try to flatter you and tell you that they're going to send it back to you in two weeks uh, with a review and you can publish it. And then they're going to charge you $50 a page and then it's going to disappear. <laughs> yeah. So that that's how you can find out. Also, just ask ask around, ask more experienced colleagues, because sometimes there's publishers that look predatory but aren't. That's the the rare case. So ask. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm um, just checking the chat box again. I don't see any further questions, and I don't see any hands up at the moment. Um, thank you so much for answering uh, answering our questions. Um, after a brilliant presentation, uh, thank you so much. Um, if anyone is interested in revisiting this this talk, we will be uploading the video of this uh, of Dr. Melody Cook's presentation uh, as soon as possible to the Jolt uh, YouTube channel. Um, Melody, is it okay if I make some closing comments? Absolutely. Yes. All right. Excellent. Then let me just quickly. Uh, share my screen. Um, so thank you so much for coming. The PSG is very happy um, to to have you. Um, we are organizing two more um, workshops in September, coming up soon, September 6th. At 7 p.m., we have Dr. Jeremy White talking about um, peer review and navigating the journal landscape we have Chelana White, who is also going to talk about um, being a new reviewer. Yes, and I think um, these two topics are of great interest for both new uh, authors, reviewers, readers, um, etc. Anybody interested in publishing. Um, so please feel free to sign up for these events. More information can be found on the PSG website. Um, we will be advertising um, on Facebook and uh, on uh, other JALT chapters uh, websites as well. So please keep an eye out. Um, I would like to make a little plug for our JALT 2023 PSG forum, where we will talk more about um, author and reviewer experiences within PSG, but also outside of PSG. So um, what experiences authors have had with us, with uh, us trying to help them with their uh, manuscripts. And um, to speak on that, we have Joseph Michael. Um, reviewer experiences, we have um, Jerry Talandis Jr., who will uh, be talking to us um, about his many years of experience as a, a, a co-editor, editor, and reviewer. Um, so we hope you'll be will, uh, able to make it on Saturday 25th in the afternoon. All right, so finally, I would like to ask uh, if you have a little bit of time to fill out our survey. Um, we have a QR code here. If you are using your phone, then that will be a little bit more difficult. Please take a picture of it. Um, it's just to give some feedback to us about the workshop, but also to Dr. Melody Cook about her presentation. Um, so thank you again for your time. And we are looking forward to seeing you again at our next workshop. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you again for inviting me. It was my pleasure and my honor.